Are you tired of the nine to five lifestyle? Do you want more freedom to do what you want, when you want it, without sacrificing your current income? Then this is the show for you. Every week, we dive into John's journey towards financial freedom and everything he has learned since 2014. Real estate investing, cryptocurrency, stocks, private lending, foreign residency, tax saving strategies, infinite banking, assets protection, and much more. Now, here is your host, the founder of the Wealth and Freedom Nexus, John Rickgarn. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're listening to this. This is your host again of the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast, John Rickgard. And I'm excited to have a brilliant guest on today, Mikkel Thorup, who has been a, shall we say, a world-renowned uh, expat expert. Just rolls right off the tongue, but he definitely <laughs> has his uh, niche community, has lived and traveled over, or excuse me, throughout 100 countries, and shares his journey, experience, and education that he has learned through the Expat Money Podcast. Now, what started as just a podcast has grown to a worldwide community of entrepreneurs who are living international location independent lifestyles. Mikel and his team believe that just because you were born in one country, say the US, the UK, Canada, for instance, does not mean you have to pay your taxes, bank, invest, raise a family, or even just live your life in that same country. There's a great big wide world out there. With that, Mikkel, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Thanks very much, John. What a very nice introduction you've done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm interested. I'm very excited to get into today's interview and, you know, hopefully inspire and uh, share some of my knowledge and my experience with your excellent audience. And yeah, let's do it. Perfect. I appreciate it. So now I myself, I'm I'm kind of boring. So I've well, I was born in Florida and now I live in Minnesota of all places. Go figure that out. But I've just lived in one country. I've invested in two other countries and I've let's see, been to five other countries myself, uh, based on or what's or how's been your background been where you've been to over 100 countries and what kind of started that whole journey for you that you wanted to see the world and live where you have uh, lived? Well, for mine, I have to go kind of far back in time, but I, I promise it won't be too long of a story. Okay. <laughs> Basically, what happened was when I was a child, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. Hmm. And I was in grade three, and the teacher pulled me out of class, and they brought me to a little room. And in there was the, the principal and the resource teacher and my teacher, and I think maybe the vice, vice teacher. I can't remember exactly who was there. Okay. Um, vice principal. And they sat me down and they said, Mikkel, Mikkel, something doesn't work quite right in your brain. And what we want to do is we want to send you to special school, special school for special boys. So John, that's what they did. Every okay. day for three years, I got on a little white bus, took a little white bus across <laughs> town, and I went to this quote unquote special school. Ah. Now, the only problem was it was not a special school. It was a regular school with a special class. Ah. So you can probably imagine what happened. I got in a lot of fights. I got picked on, I got bullied, and it was a pretty crummy situation. Now, this is no woe is me, woe is me, poor Mikkel, victim, victim mentality. Like, I certainly gave as good as I got. You know, I got hit, I hit back. There's no question. I'm not going to claim otherwise. Sure. But um, I went through this three years, and it, it was pretty rough. I, I, I did not enjoy myself by any means. And after that three years, I got to go home to my neighborhood school, quote unquote, neighborhood school. And I was so excited. I thought, wow, these kids will have missed me so much and they'll be so excited to see me and they'll be so happy. And I got back there and they all started, you know, whispering and gossiping. Oh, I remember Mikkel. He went to some retard school. Oh, totally boy. politically correct. 1980s. You know how sure. sensitive children can be. Exactly. And, um, and so once again, I started having a lot of problems there. And uh, I would start failing out and then they'd send me, send me to summer school and then I'd start failing that. And somehow I squeaked into high school and basically, long story short, at 
12 years old, I stopped going to school. I started failing out. And by 15, I officially dropped out. Okay. And what happened was I started traveling internationally not long after that. And when I started traveling, I started to meet all of these incredible people who were doing things in totally different ways than I had ever done living in Southwestern Ontario, okay. um, how I was grown, uh, how I was grew up. So it really showed me that there's not just one way to do things. There's not just one way to learn something or to go about your life or one right answer. Actually, the world is like a really big place and there's lots of different people doing lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward to today and uh, this love of travel never stopped. I have been traveling for 21 years straight. As oh, wow. you mentioned in the introduction, I have been to over 100 countries, I think 106 countries at last count. Okay. I've lived in nine different countries. Um, wow. I speak multiple languages. Uh, my wife, my wife is from, I'm Canadian with Danish heritage. My wife is from <laughs> mainland China. We met in Germany. We got married in Africa. My daughter was born in Abu Dhabi. My son was born in Brazil. <laughs> and now we live in Panama City, Panama. So, I mean, like the internationalization isn't just from, you know, the business side. It's also from the personal side. Sure. Now, on that business side, this is now what I do for a living. I help people to move overseas, and we always do it in a tax-efficient manner. We do it in a legal way and in a tax-efficient mm -hmm. manner. Um, but I learned all of these things by actually doing them myself, not okay. going to university and studying a course from someone who's never done it themselves. Because to be honest, what I do for a living does not exist anywhere else. I created my business. I created mm -hmm. my job from scratch. So there's very few people in the world who do what I do. And there's pretty much hardly anybody else who does it on the level that I do it. I mean, mm -hmm. I get literally millions of people a year who read my stuff. And, and I'm very fortunate to be able to help and inspire so many people around the world. And, and I really love what I do. I think, it's, I think it's really excellent. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that is quite the story. So thank you for sharing that. And yeah, sorry to hear about your you know, younger years, but I think in the end, it probably worked out and made you the person you are today. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, I would never, you know, I'm actually really proud of myself for these types of things. I don't think of it like, oh, that sucks or, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I'm like, yeah, I dropped out of school at 12 years old. That's awesome because mm -hmm. it allowed me to do so many other things with my time because mm -hmm. we don't know how much time we have on planet Earth. Let's be honest. Exactly. No one really knows. So I didn't waste as much time in an institution that did not work for me, that did not mm -hmm. speak to me. And I went out there and followed my passions, even at a young age. Now, I'd love to be able to tell you today that, you know, at 12 years old, I had it all figured out and I knew exactly <laughs> what my future, future oh, was Oh, don't we all? Hold. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, that would just be a downright lie. No, I had no idea. I was a scared kid and I fumbled my way through it. But through many, 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 many mistakes, I did figure things out. So the good thing is now working with clients, they don't have to go through all of the mistakes that I went through. I mean, they've got 21 years of my experience mm -hmm. to draw on so I can save people an immense amount of time and energy and effort right. on these types of things. Does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah, I think, uh, I believe it was Warren Buffett who said, you can learn a lot from mistakes, but you can learn a lot or even more from other people's mistakes. And if you can, you know, have those shortcuts in place where, you know, here, I'll help you get from A to D versus the B and C in between, then, you know, it just works out for everyone. So very um, well put. with that, Mikel, uh, and obviously you reiterated how you traveled the world and started your business and met, you know, so many different people from all corners of the world with that. How did you, or why did you start the expat money show and company? What was kind of like the triggering point of, you know, I'm going to start a podcast and talk about all this, or I'm going to start the company. Well, you know, it's kind of funny because I would consider myself a very creative person, but in this endeavor, it was not really so creative. I literally just took the two things that I love. I love money and finance, mm -hmm. and I love travel and living overseas. So okay. I just mashed them together and <laughs> created my own brand, the Expat Money Show. Gotcha. I mean, we've been going for about five years now. I've done, I think, 170 some odd episodes at this point. Uh, we've had people like Jim Rogers and Grant Cardone on the mm -hmm. show, lots of big names, people. Um, I have a big background in finance. I was an options trader for seven years and did oh. very, very well at that. So okay. I have a firm background in, in equities and options, derivatives, markets. Um, so big background from the investing side and then entrepreneurship, which is, allows me to 
help as many people as possible. I just wanted to meet other people and, and talk about ideas. And that's really what the show is about. It's very down to earth, very, you know, I wouldn't say it's like a, a very stuffy show by any means. Right. We are ourselves on the show. I swear on the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm loud and I'm boisterous and I laugh and it's, it's not a, it's not a stuffy finance show by any means, you know, it's a, it's a very relaxed and I get these incredible people from all over the world who have done these wild things and, and it's all mashed in with the internationalization and travel. We've had people on there who have traveled to every country in the world and people who have done, built billion dollar brands from scratch and mm -hmm. somehow it all works on the podcast. Right. And then from there, I've gone on, wrote a book about it. We now do the consulting business. I do a whole bunch of special reports and a, a whole business that came out of the back end from this. Cool. And I can uh, definitely attest uh, your book is definitely a must read for anyone that wants to internationalize their lifestyle, so to speak. And I will actually have a link to that book in my in the show notes as well as to your podcast. If you have not listened to the uh, Expat Money Show podcast, definitely recommend it. Listen to uh, a lot of you know wide range of guests on there from uh, Doug Casey to I remember there was a realtor, I believe down in Costa Rica, I think it was, I can't remember the individual's name, but um, that's actually another place I'm tempted to look at for possibly some international real estate. So definitely, mm -hmm. definitely not a stuffy, uh, you know, finance show by any, by any stretch of the means. So, well, the way that I like to think about it is the content that I put out, you will not find anywhere else. Like, exactly. There is such an eclectic mix. It all falls within the investor and entrepreneurial side mm -hmm. and the internationalization, but it is certainly an eclectic mix of guests on there. But this is for my own amusement more than anything else. Like I would get really bored if I just did the same show over and oh. over and over again. I want exactly. things to be exciting and fresh every day. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to guess, John, you probably not had someone like me on your show before. So it's really good no, to have definitely. a variety <laughs> variety of things you know so that you you understand i believe exactly yeah and that's what kind of started me on my uh you know my journey i look at it where you know i came up with the tagline the wealth and freedom nexus where it's a connecting point that you have wealth and then freedom where i look at it as you know, I'm sure you know people as well that are, you know, doctors, lawyers, high paid professionals. They have a lot of wealth, but they typically are not free. The second they stop working, they have no money coming into their bank account. So they have to work and slave and grind away. On the flip side, you know, back to the school years, I still remember, you know, hey, you're in school, you get three months off to horse around and do absolutely nothing or play video games all day. But mm -hmm. I certainly wasn't wealthy <laughs> when I was, you know, 12 years old or anything like that. So I look at it as, you know, building a lifestyle through passive income where you earn money, whether you're working or not. And then that just gives you the freedom to, like you do, travel the world or start new businesses or do what you want and live the way live the life you want. And like you said, no one knows how long they're going to be on this planet. I learned that firsthand with both my parents passing away by the time I was 16 of cancer. So I look at it wow. where, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, just save, 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 invest, 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 have this big, you know, huge retirement account when you're age 65. I'm like, well, statistically, I think 50, 60% of people are dead by the time they're 65. So, you know, tomorrow is not a given. So, you know, live the life you want to live. So now, Mikel, yeah. I think you said uh, you're in Panama now. Is that correct? Yep. Today okay. I'm in Panama. I have a, I have a home here. Okay. We have homes in other places as well. Sure. Yeah. I, I like Panama very much. It's a beautiful place. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so that's definitely on my docket. Uh, um, another country I want to look at. I uh, looked in or traveled to Belize uh, this last June. Definitely like the country, the culture, you know, possibly might look at some real estate there too. One thing I've always kind of looked at uh, for myself is, you know, for the internationalizing of one's life, you know, having maybe a, you know, a second residency or a second passport, investment home or real estate, you know, in another country. But I always kind of look at, you know, what are, you know, what is the country like? What's the government like? How safe and secure and stable is? I mean, jokingly, I think both of us can say, you know, eh, we might cross Yemen off our list for maybe investing in. But with Panama, I kind of look at the world as a whole. I think we were all kind of taken for a 
little journey with uh, COVID from March of 2020. We got to see some countries did really well with uh, dealing with COVID and some not so well. So how has Panama been for you both on a pre-COVID basis and a post-COVID basis? Well, okay. So there's, there's a lot to unpack on that one. Mm -hmm. So COVID did hit Panama in that the country is very wealthy here. So they had the money to lock down. Now, if you look at some of the other Central American countries, let's take Nicaragua, for example. Sure. Nicaragua is a massively poor country. Mm -hmm. And Ortega just said, hey, listen, you guys do what you want to do. If you want to stay at home, you stay at home. You don't want to stay at home. Okay, great. Yeah. Because they really couldn't. I mean, they would have had a revolt. They would have marched and taken them out if they, if <laughs> because the people would have literally been starving to death. Right. In Panama, they had the money to lock things down. They had the money to enforce it. The people had maybe a little bit of savings and the government had a bit of money where they could do social programs. So they did lock okay. down here, which, you know, I'm a pretty hardcore libertarian, so I don't mm. believe in this whatsoever, but it happened. Luckily it finished last year and we haven't had anything to do with this for a long time now panama is completely open okay. nice and free airport is open everything like that now we have countries around the world that are either still not opened or are locking down for a second time or panama kind of learned its lesson <laughs> yeah or third time or them, etc um panama kind of learned its lesson i okay. think that there was i have been told from very good authority that someone approached one of the health ministers and said if you don't open this up I'm going to kill you. Oh. And a week later, the country was back open. Imagine so that. it's that kind of uh, <laughs> torches and pitchforks type of yeah. mentality, which happens here in Central America, where these countries have to watch out for. Right. So I don't think that we're going to get any more lockdowns here in Panama. Okay. I'm very grateful for that. I know Belize did have lockdowns. Costa Rica right now has vaccine passports, which I don't agree with whatsoever. Um, I have actually Costa Rican friends who are now leaving Costa Rica to come to Panama because they've locked things down. But I've helped lots of clients move to Costa Rica over the years, and it is a beautiful country, and I've been there many times, and mm-hmm. and I like it. Uh, I just don't like these specific parts. Sure. So I think you have to look at kind of at many different aspects but as you mentioned, you know, what are the, your immigration processes like? What are the laws like? What is the currency like? What are the v- investment opportunities like? All of these types of things we need to go into depth with. So when I work with private clients, you know, we're creating a giant list of all the things that they're after. And okay. from there, tailor making something based on their needs. So hmm. it's not like there's, oh, you know, what is the best country in the world? Because what is the best for me might sure. be terrible for you like yep. i like the hot weather i'm from canada and we had three feet of snow on the ground <laughs> yep. i never want to see snow again in my life unless i got sn- skis strapped to my toes then i don't want to see snow again right but, um so hot is fine for me but for other someone else they might go oh my god i don't want hot and humid i mm-hmm. want springtime weather well we were just in Colombia for three weeks and it was that that springtime uh type of climate all year round and okay. that was excellent but we saw some big safety concerns while I was there mm-hmm. and some violent crime and things like that. For me, that's like really high on my list. I've got right. a wife and two kids. I don't want to deal with anything like that. So it's kind of a juggling act here. Does that make sure. sense? No, it definitely does. Yeah. And like you said, what's best for you is not the best for me or someone else. You know, I even look at some of the you know, citizenship by investment programs, you can go to, you know, some country that no one's ever heard of and spend what $100,000 for citizenship. And maybe that works for someone. But maybe another person wants to get residency in Europe. And I think some are up to like 2 million euros or something like that for investment residency. And yeah, if you're if you're an Eskimo and love snow, you know, maybe you want to go to Sweden. If you're wanting, you know, warm weather, you go to Central America or somewhere down South. So mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Um, with that, which, so you mentioned the, obviously the safety aspects and what's important, you know, for one's, you know, what their lifestyle is, if they have a family, uh, what their concerns, what should one all look at if they're looking to diversify outside their home country. And at the time of this recording, most of my listeners are in the U S but I do want to tailor this 
a little bit more to you know the international community but what all from a global spec perspective should one look at when they want to diversify their life well, I can answer you in this way. When I have private clients come to me, we look at five, six, seven different tracks of, of things that need to get done. Okay. So usually what we're looking at, um, it could be a citizenship by naturalization. It can be by descent. It can be through marriage. It can be through birth tourism. Like me and my family did birth tourism. We flew down to Brazil, gave birth to my son in Brazil. We were okay. there for six months. My son became a Brazilian citizen because I'm the legal guardian of a Brazilian citizen. I get to apply for what's called the family reunification visa, and I get my oh. permanent residency there, which wow. allows me in two years to get my citizenship in Brazil. So okay. it's things like this that we work on. So residencies, citizenships, then we'll start looking at corporate structures. So LLCs, IBCs, trusts, foundations, we'll do this for ease of business, for diversification, for uh, tax reasons, possibly, possibly, and certainly for asset protection reasons. Getting the getting your wealth outside of your home country can be a very smart maneuver. Uh, we can change jurisdictions. We can change governments. We can change laws. So going from a common law to a civil law, we can oh. change from going English to Spanish speaking or some other type of language. So if someone ever, if you have a plaintiff who ever comes after you, well, then it's going to be a massively uphill battle to come after you. Sure. And if the offense was not done in that country, then what right do they have to enter that country and make it uh, and to sue you? So we look at asset protection for a lot of these types of things. Um, from there, we would be looking at either a second home, either I say a second home, but it could still be a primary residency. So okay. a place that you actually live in could be a vacation home, could be a second home that you are going to do for short-term rentals, long-term rentals. Um, we might want to see these in either the country that you are getting your residency or citizenship in. It might even be a path to get your residency or citizenship. So there's different ways that we'll look at the real estate. Um, and then the last couple are kind of the mixed bag random. So we might be looking at cryptocurrency, how it's held, where it's held. Is it in, in, at an international brokerage or, or exchange, I should say? Um, we could look at discount brokerage houses, you know, offshore. So we do it in a more tax efficient manner. If you're an American, you're going to be paying taxes worldwide, but we do have strategies to mitigate your taxes. Sure. You can get into taxation in another part. Uh, we would be looking at precious metals, so not just how to buy and sell them, but where they're held, if it's in a private vault. Is it allocated, unallocated? Is it a safety mm -hmm. deposit box? Is it segregated? All of these types of things we look at. And then the tax mitigation, so tax mitigation from the U.S., from the country <laughs> that you have your residency and citizenships in, and from your host country that you might be living in, either as a tourist or on some other type of visa. So there is like a lot of things that mm -hmm. we unpack on these types of calls. And usually it takes me about three to six months to go through all of these things with a client. We okay. start by creating a plan for them on the first couple of calls and then setting up calls with my lawyers, with my accountants who I work with and start putting all these things in place. Okay. And then I join all of the calls and I sit down with them and we might have a, a Panamanian lawyer and an American CPA and <laughs> me and the client and the spouse. We might have like five of us on a call. And wow. then, okay, from a tax side, what does it look like? From an immigration side, what does it look like? From a legal side, what does it look like? From a lifestyle side, what does it look like? From a family side, what does it look like? All of these types of things things. And we create this, this overall holistic plan and then implement everything over those three to six months. Wow. Okay. That's pretty intense. Uh, Very and intense. But the thing is, John, at the end, like their life is like completely transformed. Right. And they have things that like they may have been dreaming about for 20 years and have never had the courage to put into place. Mm -hmm. And we get it all done and we get it all done legally and tax efficient. They're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on the situation and taxes. And it's like so amazing to see the look on their face and they're like, wow, like they actually did this and we break it all down. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I think it's really cool. I think it's really, really neat. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, one thing I did just want to quick unpack uh, for some of my listeners 
and again, kind of gearing more towards the U.S. based listeners. Now, when you're talking about the residency versus the citizenship, now the citizenship would basically be, you know, I'm in the U.S., I have a passport, I'm a citizen, I was obviously born here. The residency would be more kind of like the equivalent of a green card where I was born somewhere else, but maybe I'm working here in the U.S. now. Is that correct? Yeah, that's one way to look at it, and I look at it, and I think that is in good context for Americans. Okay. But to break things down a little bit further, you have many different types of visas. Mm-hmm. We focus specifically on residency visas, okay. and of those visas, I personally like permanent residency visas. Now, I do do uh, working visas. I mean, I have done; I've gone through them myself, and I've helped some clients. But those are usually tied to an individual company. Um, We can do retirement visas, which I also have done many, many times for many of my clients. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times those will not lead to citizenship. Our end goal is usually citizenship. So through a permanent residency, we can actually go through what's called naturalization. So if you live in the country, could be five years, could be seven years. For Switzerland, it could be 20 years. But eventually, (laughs) you are on a path to getting a passport. Now, the passport is just a legal travel document to cross borders. Sure. But what we're really looking for is the the citizenship. So you'll actually have a certificate that you are a citizen. So if you lose your passport, you can get another passport. Okay. You have all the rights of someone who lived there. The only thing that might change is for some countries, they won't let naturalized uh, citizens join the military. So they won't let them do national service. And in some cases, they may not let you vote. But in most cases, you can. There's just a couple of different uh, rules for for some of these countries. But in either instance of a residency or a citizenship, you have the legal right to live, to work, to buy property, to be in this country. The big difference is with the citizenship, you get the passport and you, you have... You can go there anytime you want, no matter what. It's not going to get revoked or anything like this. Sounds good. And I think that, and we'll see if uh, President Biden or AOC or Warren is listening to this, but I think the tax mitigation is probably uh, probably one of the smarter strategies right now uh, here in the U.S. And I can't can't speak to Canada or other countries, but in the United States, we've had everything proposed from uh, we're going to track every transaction in your bank account for that's uh, $600 or more. I think that's out now for how long we'll see. Uh, The 1031 exchange, we're looking at getting rid of that. Uh, We want to raise uh, marginal tax rates. Uh, We should raise the estate tax. We should lower the minimum for state tax exemption. I mean, I could you know, go on here for quite some time, but lifetime gift exemption is going to be going down. It's at what, $11 million right now. And they want to take it down to maybe two. Yeah. And wow. Well, and and again, right now, these are all proposals. I mean, who knows what's all going to make it through, you know, Congress and what the final bill was. I am more of a, you know, plan ahead and, you know, what are some options, you know, for myself and my family. And I don't think a lot of people uh, know this, but you, uh, the United States is actually one of two countries, only two countries that tax you on a worldwide basis. So if you are a U.S. citizen, you move to Panama, you live in Panama, you work in Panama, you have all your investments in Panama, et cetera, et cetera. The U.S. still looks at you as like, well, you still got to pay us taxes. Now they offer, I think it's like $114,000 or $140,000 foreign earned income tax exclusion. Is that correct? Or Close, close. It's one hundred and eight thousand seven hundred dollars. As the, as we are recording this, it goes up every <laughs> single year based on inflation. Okay. Uh, it's called the foreign earned in- income exclusion, and there are a couple of different qualifiers for it. But it is a tool in a toolbox that we work with our clients. It's one of the first tools we use, but it's not the okay. only tool. But it is a is a viable option for reducing your taxes for sure. Gotcha. All right. So I'm kind of looking at just this checklist. Obviously, you've accomplished quite a bit, Mikel, and, you know, from your podcast and your book and helping clients, you know, throughout the world. As we're uh, publishing this, we are, or excuse me, recording this, we're at the tail end of 2021. Uh, You yourself, you know, either professionally or personally, what are you most excited about for uh, 2022 and beyond? Well, 
I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling with my family <laughs> this year. So that's what I'm pretty stoked about. We go to Aruba, my wife and I, then we go back to Brazil to finalize our residency. So we'll go to Brazil and Uruguay for that. I have meetings in Uruguay. Then we're doing a, we're going to Turkey and hopefully Saudi Arabia for oh, wow. a couple of weeks. We're going to buy some properties in Turkey and then Saudi Arabia, because I just have never been there before, even though I lived in the Middle East for eight years. Okay. Um, in August and September, I should be going to the Eastern Bloc and uh, the Balkans for about okay. two or three months. I'm speaking on stage at a couple of conferences over there. And then next November, we're doing the Galapagos. I'm going to be doing a um, a conference on, we rented a small cruise ship. My friend oh, wow. and I, we rented an entire cruise ship. So we're going to do a seven, possibly eight day cruise through the Galapagos Islands oh, with wow. speakers every morning for about two hours. And then all day long, we'll be snorkeling and hiking through the Galapagos to the mountains in uh, on the islands in the Galapagos. And that's my year traveling and speaking on stage and podcasting and investing. Wow. <laughs> got I'm quite stoked. A year. I think it's going to be excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a year packed as long as uh, COVID 2021 uh, Pi Kappa Delta Omicron doesn't shut down the world again, but hopefully that's far behind us. Now. I've been traveling for pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. I mean, and did not let this stop me where there's a will, there's a way, my friend, where there's yep. a will, there's a way. Exactly. I noticed uh, Australia was not on your list of travels. I wonder why. <laughs> well, geez, you know, I lived in Australia for three years back from 2006 to 2009. And I used to speak on stage about the residency programs there and used to help people go through these types of things. I lived in New Zealand. I lived in Australia. I traveled extensively through the South Pacific and it's really a shame what's happening. It's really tragic mm -hmm. there because this is a country that is so near and dear to my heart. I seriously considered Australia my second home mm -hmm. and they've just destroyed it. It's just socialism has just gone rampant and this woke culture is just destroying everything. It's so sad to see. Yeah. Yeah. Australia. And I don't know, it might still be on my bucket list to visit eventually in my lifetime, but it's not a it's definitely not on the front burner. I'll put it that way right yeah. now. So, well, everything returns to where it came from. So, it was once a penal colony and it has now <laughs> returned to a penal colony. Yeah, exactly. More things change, the more they stay the same, I guess. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as 2022, obviously, you have all your travels planned. Are there any new uh, uh, businesses you're starting up or expanding for 2022 or just the speaking engagements you're doing? Well, we should have uh, six, possibly seven new books coming out in oh, wow. March. So those will be guides on many different countries, some of the, the more popular countries that my clients go to. Um, these will be premium books. These will not be uh, mass media paperbacks at $11 by any means, but they're okay. going to be very well-researched, thought-out reports on different countries. So we're very excited about those. Those are some of the big things I have just stepped up to the board of directors for a nonprofit in Africa. It's actually cool. an American nonprofit, but uh, it's an organization that's been going for 13 years. It's called 1018, 1018 Uganda. Oh. And uh, I'm helping to grow that. So my goal is to double or more the size of the nonprofit in 2022. So we're doing a huge literacy program. We've pretty much got it funded within a day, the day that I launched it. Um, we're going to be taking 60 girls through literacy. These are all teen mothers from the slums in Uganda. Oh, wow. So it's, uh, it's a project that's very near and dear to my heart. I have traveled a lot through Uganda. I went there, I don't even remember what year it was, maybe 2011, 2012, something. Okay. And just fell in love with the country. Just the most amazing people there and natural beauty and the wildlife is just amazing but the lockdowns were really brutal there oh. and it's a pretty messed up situation. You had these girls entering into prostitution at like 14, 15 years old for a plate of chicken and rice. Like Jeez. it's rough. Now all these 14, 15 year old girls who were probably already orphans themselves now have babies and they have no way to support themselves. So they're living on the streets. And now we take them into the halfway home and we clean them up and give them medical attention and their kids medical attention and counseling and trauma therapy because they've 
probably been raped or going through all of these types of things. And then we enroll them in what we call skills for life. So it's uh, hairdressing programs or uh, sewing or tailoring, these types of things. And it's so wild to see the transformation from these girls. First of all, like they go from being so skinny and basically beat up mentally and physically to a giant smile on their face. And same with the kids. We actually just did a graduation for the girls um, who graduated one of our skills for life programs. And you see the photos and they've got their graduation gowns on that they made. Mm -hmm. So through our tailoring class and then the, the girls that were in the hairdressing school, they did all the hair and the makeup. So they all look so beautiful and they're all done up and a huge smile on their face. And it's like, wow, just a small amount of money has made such a massive impact mm -hmm. on someone's life. It's incredible to see. Wow. It's so rewarding. Wow. That is quite the mission there. Uh, since you brought that up, Mikel, is there a way, and maybe I can put this in the show notes if someone's interested in supporting that organization, 1018 Uganda, you know, through donations, is there an opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. We would that? love that. So if you guys go to 10, as in one, zero, 18, as in spelled out the letters dot okay. org it's going to take you to our website uh we are a 501c3 nonprofit uh registered in the united states so we are tax deductible for those who itemize and it's a good it's a good organization it's based on libertarian values we do do relief aid like we like i said we do help feed them and clothe them and put a roof over their head but a lot of the focus is on the entrepreneurial side okay. so teaching the girls how to take care of themselves you know um accounting basic arithmetic we're the big one i'm doing right now is the literacy program that i mentioned because the girls probably have never gone to school at all mm -hmm. so you know being able to self-teach and be responsible for their own education is absolutely massive yeah so I'm, I'm working a lot with these guys. I sit on the board of directors. It's a completely non-paid position. I just want to come out there and say this straight off the bat because there are there's a lot of bad things that happen with charities yeah. and nonprofits. Uh, I don't take a salary. My partner, Jennings Wright, she doesn't take a salary. We both donate our own money to the charity. So it would really make no sense if we took a salary right. ourselves. <laughs> uh, we actually break down. We're very transparent of where all the money goes. If you see salary on there the salary that is on there is the security guards that work at the halfway house to protect the girls it's these okay. types of salaries these are done by ugandans so we actually employ ugandans okay. to do this type of work to help keep them safe um for the teachers for our vocational training for these types of things wow. so it's a really good nonprofit. uh i'm super passionate about it which i think you can probably yep, see definitely <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah we'd be very happy to um to speak with any of your people and and bring them on board and like i said it's tax deductible so sure it goes oh, a long way yeah thanks for sharing that uh Mikkel, and i'll definitely have a link to that in the show notes it's Definitely good that you, you know, like you said, just nonprofit, you're donating your time and money. I won't mention names, but I know there's some nonprofits. That I think they're only nonprofit because they pay the CEO every dime that the organization brings in and hence they don't have a profit. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Or they fly private jets or they sit around in oak boardrooms and or, they eat, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food for board meetings and things. And it's yep. Just, and all it's our unethical and it's there. wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we're getting uh, close to the end of our time, Mikel, and I greatly appreciate you uh, taking time out of your schedule to come on to my show and, you know, educate our listeners. And if they were interested in reaching out, you know, diversifying their life, maybe mitigating some taxes or, you know, buying a second home overseas or, you know, anything along those lines, uh, what would be the best way to reach out to you and your company? Yeah. So if you guys are just getting started and you just want more information, if you just want to learn, sure. then I suggest that you pick up my book. It's called Expat Secrets, How to Pay Zero Taxes, Live Overseas, and Make Giant Piles of Money. Super humble title. I know, John, I'm a very humble guy. That's how I roll. <laughs> but uh, that is a very good starting place for a lot of people if you just want education. If you okay. want to work with me and you actually want to put something in place and you're serious about this, then you can reach out to me at expatmoneyshow.com. You're going to find a contact us form on there. I think it's on the about us page or something at the bottom. If you scroll to the bottom, okay. shoot me a message on there. I, I'm happy to to try to help help out and I'll explain more about my products and services and, and how I assist people. 
But um, yeah, besides that, check out the podcast, Expat Money Show. If you go to literally any podcasting app, you'll be able to find us on there. Uh, subscribe on that. We have a, a private Facebook group called Expat Money Forum mm -hmm. with thousands of people on there with a huge discussion. Uh, you know, a lot of networking, a lot of making mm -hmm. friends, a lot of even romance has been found on our group. So, <laughs> <Wow. laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pretty interesting place, pretty lively, mm -hmm. uh, lots of interesting discussions there. I can't necessarily promise that you will always like what you hear on there, <laughs> but, you know, it is a cool place. You're going to meet some interesting folk on there, but yeah. I, I love them. I think it's great. And I can attest to that too. Uh, yeah, I've read your book, listened to your podcast, and I'm part of that Facebook group as well. It's uh, connected with some numerous friends. An uh, old professor of mine uh, lives in the Philippines now. Another friend that's looking to move to Costa Rica. Uh, connected with someone in the Balkans. I mean, yeah, it's a very, very much an international community, no question. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, Mikel, for your time. I'll be sure to put all these. Uh, uh, resources in the show notes, and I'll probably have you back on the podcast another time. Sounds good. Thanks so much for your time, John. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mikkel. Thank you for listening. Be sure to share, rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. For more updates, check out www.wealthandfreedomnexus.com. Remember, nothing on this show should be considered tax, legal, investment, or professional advice. This show is produced solely for educational and informational purposes. Please consult an appropriate and licensed tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for specific advice for your situation. For distribution or publication rights or media interviews, please contact the host.